Good morning, students. Am I audible? Please confirm it once. Students, please confirm in the chat box. Am I audible or not? Thank you, students. Thank you for confirming. Thank you for confirming, students. Students, yesterday, yesterday was the first session of our Python class. Yesterday was the first session of our Python class. And what we discussed yesterday was, what we discussed yesterday was history of Python, what actually the Python is. After that, we discussed about the history of Python. Then we discussed about the downloading process of Python. After that, we discussed about the features of Python. Of course, we discussed about the versions also. We discussed about the versions also, that which version, which is the version, which are the versions we are using, right? So this is what we discussed yesterday. What is Python? Just let's give a quick recap. Python is what? General purpose, simple, platform independent, highly interpreted and highly high level programming language. After that, what kind of applications we can develop with the help of Python? I've told you that we can develop all such, in every field nowadays, Python is used. Even if we talk about the automation industry, web applications, development of keeping applications, artificial intelligence, web scrapping, harvesting, data visualization, audio and video based application, numerical and complex mathematical operation, data analysis and data analytics, computer vision, education programs, etc. Then we discussed with the history of Python. It was conceived in 1980 and brought into action in 1989, but officially it was released in 1991-20. Who was the father of Python? Udo Van Rossum. He developed this at Central Viscundian Fortima Informatica in Netherlands. ABC is the predecessor of Python programming language. It is maintained by a non-commercial organization that is Python Software Foundation. Official website, I've told you, www.python.org. After that, students, we discussed about the versions of Python. Versions of Python in which I've told you the one is the major version. And if we talk about X, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, all these are the minor versions which are outdated nowadays and python programming language does not support the backward backward capability nowadays we are using python 3.11 so i've told you to download it from the its official website that is www.python.org then we started discussing about the features of python Features of Python. Features are what I've told you that the facilities provided by the language developers. It is simple, freeware and open source, platform independent, dynamically typed language, interpreted programming language, high level programming language, robust, extensible, embedded, both functional and object oriented programming language. It also supports the third APIs, third party APIs, that is application programming interface. 
Now, Python is inspired from, I have told you that it is inspired from the, it has learned the functional programming from C, object-oriented programming from C++, modular programming language from Modulo 3, then scripting programming from Perl. How it is simple? Because of its rich set of APIs. What is API? API is a module, and module is a collection of functions, variable, and class. The second factor for being simple is it's garbage collector. It's garbage collector. What does it do? It removes the unused memory space and improves the performance of Python-based application. Third factor for being simple is because of its user-friendly syntaxes. I told you what are the syntaxes. Syntaxes are the kind of what are syntaxes students have told you? Tell me. They are the kind of formulas in the simple language. Okay. Let's go ahead. Then it's an in platform independent language. Why it is platform independent language? Because it remains same on all types of OS. Now, it is in effective platform independent all types of values will stored in the form of objects, right? All values are stored in the form of objects. If we talk about size restriction, there is no size restriction in Python. Although if we talk about Java, it is a size restrictor. Freeware and open source. It, why it is freeware? Because it can be easily downloaded from its official website, right? Then the standard name of Python is C Python. Distributors of Python, which they are, uh, which are using the Python, is J Python or Jython. It is used for running Java-based applications. Iron Python or I Python used for chash.net applications. Micro Micro Python used to develop microcontrollers. Then Ruby Python used to Ruby based applications. Then Anaconda used for Hadoop applications or big data applications. After that, we got discussed about the dynamically typed language. Dynamically typed language. Students, dynamically typed language means static type. We have two types of languages. One is static type, the other one is dynamically typed language. Static type means static type means programmer must define a variable with the data type. Otherwise, we'll get the compile error. But in Python-based programming, it is dynamically typed language in which programmer need not to specify the data type of the variable. Okay. And the Python execution environment based value-based assignment by the programming. All subjects are stored in the form of objects. So that is all what we discussed yesterday. That is all what we discussed yesterday. So let's get back to the second day. Let's get back to the second day and continue with the features of Python. So do we have any doubt? Do we have any doubt, students? Good. Good. Let's go ahead with the second day. Okay. Okay. Now we'll be continuing with, we'll be continuing with the second day. Let's go ahead. Features of Python continue. The fifth feature, the fifth feature we discuss is interpreted programming language. Now, what do we understand by interpreted programming language? Interpreted programming language means whenever we develop any Python program, we need to give a file name with an extension that is .py. Okay, you need to give an file name with extension 
see why. Like I am using some programming. I am doing one programming. See, I, I'll show you. I'll show you. Whatever file I, we, we are saving, we are saving with the name of dot py. See, let me show you. See, whatever file we are saving here, whatever files we are saving here, we are giving the extension dot py like teacher dot py poly example one dot py we have all the files all the files which we have saved we need to give the extension that is dot py okay okay now when we execute python program two process takes place internally now, what are those processes? One is compilation process and other is execution process. Execution process. Students, what do we understand by compilation process? When we talk about the compilation process, the source code which is submitted to the Python compiler and it reads the source code, check for or errors by verifying the Syntaxes. If no error found, then Python compiler converts it into the intermediate code called bytecode with an extension dot pyc. If the error found in source code, then we the then the error displayed on the console. Let me show you. Let me show you. See, what happens is, what happens is, this is a Python execution environment. I am saving one file with the extension that is .py. Now, the Python compilation process will take place. Now, what happens? It will convert it in line by line. It will convert it into line by line. And just a second, students. And what it did it, what it did it, it converted it into the bytecode. This is an internal process. Okay. It internally save it with the extension that is dot pyc. It converts it into the bytecode. And what will do? The PVM, the execution process takes place. The PVM reads line by line the bytecode and converts it into the machine understandable format. We all know students, we have already read that, which is in our school days also. We have read that the machine understandable language is a binary language, right? So what does it do? It converts it into the binary code, read by the OS and gives the result. Okay, now let me show you. If we talk about the compilation process, the Python source code submit to the Python compiler. Okay, it reads the source code, check for errors by verifying the syntaxes. If there will be no error, if there will be no error, it converts it into the byte code with an extension that is .pyc. If error found, in the source code, we'll get the error displayed on the screen. Now, when we talk about the execution process, the execution process, what happens is the PVM reads the Python intermediate code and line by line and convert it into the machine understandable language. It read by OS and processor and finally gives the result. Definitely, I'll show you. Don't you worry. I'll show you. I'll show you. See, now the PVM reads it, the bytecode internally and converts it into the machine understandable code that is binary code 
read by the OS and processor and gives the result. And gives the result. Let me show you. See, this is a source code. We have saved the file with the extension that is .py. Internally, the when the Python compiler, the compilation process takes place, then it converts it into the intermediate code or the byte code with the extension that is .pyc, right? Then what happens is the PVM execution takes place. It reads the line by line. It reads the code line by line and converts it into the machine understandable format that is binary code and gives the result. Clear, students? Is this clear to you? Students, is this clear? Please answer. Good, good. Let's go ahead. Let's go ahead. I'll tell you each and everything, don't you worry. I'll tell you each and everything. See, so in Python program, execution, compilation process, and execution processes taking place line by line conversion. And, and it is one of the interpretation based programming language. Now, one student is asking me, what is the full form of PVM? What is the full form of PVM? It is Python virtual machine. PVM is one program in Python software whose role is to read line by line of byte code. What does it do? It reads the byte code line by line and converts it into the machine understandable language that is binary code. Is it clear, student? Is this clear? Okay, let's go ahead. So I have shown you the flowchart also. Now let's go ahead. This is a high level programming language. Students, what do we understand by high level programming language? We have two types of programming language. One is the low level programming language and the other one is high level programming language. And Python is the high level programming language. Low level programming language, if we talk about, we represent the data in lower level data like binary, octal, and hexadecimal. Please remember that this data is not by default understandable by programmers or the end users. Why? Because do they understand the binary code? The end user or the programmers? No. Octal? No. Hexadecimal? No. This data is not the understandable by programmers, right? So this is not a low level programming language. Like I have given an example. Let's take A is equal to, this is a binary to a data. Let's talk about B. It's 0, 0, 2, 3. This is an octal. Now, do they able, will they be able to understand it? No. Let's talk about 0x FACE. What is this? This is a hexadecimal. Do the end user understand this? No. So this is not a low level programming language. This is a high level programming language in which, in which whether the data is in binary format, octal format, or hexadecimal, the high level programming language converts it into the decimal number system. Decimal number system is what? It is a number system which is understandable by programmers on end users. Even although we also will understand, the end users also understand the decimal number system that is a zero to nine. Okay. Is this okay? Now, let's go ahead with 
robust. Now, what do we understand by robust? Robust means strong. Students, Python is one of the robust because of its exception handling. It is one of the robust language because of its exception handling property. Now, what is exception? What is exception? Runtime errors. Runtime errors of the program are called the exceptions. So whenever we run a program, if we'll be unable to, if we'll be unable to, we get the error. Okay, so we'll get the error. So all such errors, all such errors generated technically, generated technically. So just because of these errors, because of this exception handling, it is a robust language. In spite of giving, in spite of giving the wrong answer, what does it do? What does it do? It gives the error. It generates the technical error messages. Now, what is exception handling? The process of converting technical error messages into user-friendly error messages is called the exception handling. Okay? So if the Python program uses exception handling, the Python program is robust. Clear? Let's go ahead. Now, extensible. Extensible. See, the Python programming, giving the programming facilities to the other languages also, like C++, which means Python code can also be written in other languages like C++. So it is an extensible programming language. Okay? Why? Because of it can be used in the other languages also. The Python code can be used in the other languages also. Now, next is embedded. Next is embedded. Why? Because Python programming can call other languages coding segments for fastest execution. For the fastest execution, Python programming can also call the other languages coding segment. Example, Python code can call C programming code as well. Let's go ahead. Let's go ahead. Extensible supports for third party APIs. Now, when we talk about the third party APIs, what does that mean? What does that mean? Shouldn't as Python libra library, API can do many tasks and operations and unable to perform the complex operation. If we talk about the Python libraries also, Python can solve many tasks and operations, but it is unable to solve complex operations and to solve such complex operations easily and quickly, it uses the third party APIs. Okay, third party APIs. Now, what are those? Like NumPy, which is a use for numerical calculations, complex numerical application. Then the Pandas, what, what is that? That is a analysis tool. Next, then Matplotlib, that is for data visualization, SkyPy and SkyKit also. Now we'll discuss, we are done with the, we are done with the features. Now we'll proceed with the identifiers and literals in Python. Hope whatever we have discussed till, till now, it's clear to you students. Is it clear to you? Any questions? Abhinash, it's no that. Do you have any doubt?
okay good good let's go ahead with identifiers and literals yes we will cover the details on numpy and pandas also Soumya, we will cover the details on NumPy and Pandas also. Okay, fine. That is that will be the part of our course. Okay, now let's discuss about the identifiers and literals in Python. on which distribution we will work. Students, we will work on the NumPy's and the Pandas and you can go ahead with the C. You can go ahead with the uh, this course content. You'll come to know where we are going to work. You'll come to know about it. Okay. You'll come to know about it. Just what is that course content and what all we are going to cover. Okay. Now identifiers and literals in Python. Students, today we have a uh, we had today is our second day, so you can tell your family and friends also to join us if they want to join this Python course. If they want to join this Python course, they will get the recordings also for first two days. For three days, they'll get the recordings also. So if they want to join, till, till they want to join, they can. They can. Okay. Let's go ahead with identifiers and literal in Python. Students, when we talk about identifiers and literal, what does that mean? What does that mean? Literals are what? Value passing to the Python program. Literals in Python are nothing, but are they are the values passing to the Python program. So whenever we write any Python program, we use, we enter some inputs. So all the inputs we make are known as the literals or values, okay? So whenever we write any Python programming language, we entered some inputs. All those inputs are called the literals or values. So all types of values are called literals. We have five types of literals. We have five types of literals. They are integer literal, floating point literal, SGR literals, Boolean literals, and the collection literals. Okay, how many types of literals do we have? Integer floating, str, boolean, and collection. Now, identifiers or variables in Python. Now, literals are the values. Literals are the values. But what do we understand by identifiers? Whenever we enter input or literal, they are stored in the main memory by allocating sufficient amount of memory space with the help of data types. Right now, to process that data which was stored in the memory space, we must use some distinct names which makes us to identify the values stored in the memory. Space. Right, so hence names are called the identifiers. So, what are identifiers? What are identifiers? We are using the we are using the name helping us to store the data in the main memory with we are storing the data in the main memory right with the help of with the help of name given to the just a second student i have it ma'am can you please show me the five types of literals once more, sorry, I was unable to write it. I was not able to write it. Uh, students, you need not to write it. You will get the PDF of everything. Don't you worry about it. You will get the PDF of everything. 
whatever we'll discuss in the class, you'll get the PDF of that. Even although uh, we are going ahead with the, although we are going ahead with this, uh, P, uh, this PowerPoint file, but still you'll get the PDF of them. Student, only the first day and the second day, you'll be able to show the PPT. After that, no PPTs will be there. Whatever we'll discuss in the class will be in the format of PDF only. Whatever we'll discuss in the class will be in the format of PDF so that you'll be able to understand it in a better way. Okay. Now, whenever we make any input, let's go back to identifier. So whenever we make any input or literal, they are stored in the main memory. And as a programmer, we must give it a distinct name to identify the values stored in the memory. And these names are called as the identifier. So the value of identifiers are changing or verifying during program execution. Okay. So identifiers are also known as the variables. So all type of input or input or literal must be stored in the form of variables. And all types of variables are called the objects. We have already discussed one thing. Now let's go ahead. Let's go ahead. What is variable? A variable is an identifier whose value can be changed during execution of the program. Let's go ahead. Rules of using identifiers or variables in Python programming. Students, whenever we are using the variables in Python programming, we must use, uh, we must follow the following rules. Vari the variable name is a combination of alphabets, digits, and a special symbol underscore OD. Please remember that variable name is a combination of alphabets, digits, and a special symbol that is underscore only. The first letter, no other special symbol, no other spe special symbol is accepted. The first letter of variable name must start with either with an alphabet or underscore. Okay. So the first letter of variable name must start with either with an alphabet or underscore only. Let me show you. Let me show you. Let me show you. See, if I write, if I write one, A, B, C is equal to 100. We will get the error. This is invalid. Syntax error. Invalid decimal literal. Now, if I write ABC is equal to 100, that is accepted. Now, if I write at the rate ABC is equal to 100, we will get the error. We will get the error. Now, if I use any other symbol, let's talk dollar, dollar salary is equal to 100. Again, the invalid syntax. But in spite of this, if I write, if I write underscore sal is equal to 100, this will be, this will be accepted. This will be accepted. Okay, now if I write one, two, three, sal is equal to 256. The invalid decimal literal syntax error. Is it clear student? Is this clear? So, Whatever, whatever we need to write, we'll need to write with the help of 
we need to write with the help of alphabet or special symbol that is underscore only. Otherwise, we will get the error. We will get the error. I have pasted some examples here. I have pasted some examples here for your practice. Now let's go ahead. Let's go ahead. No special symbols are allowed within variable except the underscore. Accept the underscore. But in spite of this, if I'll use, if I'll use hash, it is used for commenting in Python. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. Let me show you. Let me show you. Let me show you. If I write is equal to 100, this is accepted. This is accepted. Right? And if I write sub hash 45 is equal, is equal to 100, why? Sal is not defined. Sal is not defined. So if I write, if I write Sal hash 45 is equal to 100, is it accepted? Yes. See, why? Because whatever we write after hash, Whatever we write after hash is, hash is used for commenting. Hash is used for commenting. So it does not matter. It does not matter if we'll write like this. It does not matter if we'll write like this, if we'll use the hash. If I write employee sal is equal to 45. See, invalid syntax. If I write employee star is equal to 45, it is accepted. No special symbol. Even the, even the space is also not accepted. Okay. Students, is this clear to you? Is this clear? Okay, Rajendra Prasad has raised the hand. Sweat also wants you to ask some question. Okay, so just a second. I'll answer each and every one. Yes, Rajendra, please unmute yourself. Uh, hi. Uh, here I have a doubt. Uh, on the first syntax, uh, the SAL sequel to 100, you have executed it's accepted. and. The second syntax sal hash 45 is equal to 100. It gives an error, right? The name, name error. Sal, why, why we got the name error? Because Rajinder, we have done sal in capital. We wrote sal in capital. Here we use the small letter. So it's case sensitive. Yes, the case sensitive. Right. Exactly. That is why this is not acceptable. We got the Error. Okay. Earlier it was underscore sal. Here, if we talk, that is why they asked, yeah. did you mean underscore sal? See, here it was underscore sal. We can talk about this. Yeah, okay. 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 Yeah, I understood. Thanks. You understand? Thank you. Yes, yes. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Students don't get confused. Don't get confused. There is nothing to get confused in. Okay, switch. Tell me, what is your question? Please unmute yourself. Yeah, I don't understand why you took A and underscore, and you said it takes only A's and underscore, and then now it's taking the cap lock for Sal, denying the small one, like there's no A behind Sal. See, here the same thing is you are asking the same question. See, here we have used the capital letters, right? 
cell is equal to 100, right? After that, yeah. we use the cell that is in the small letters. This is a case. Well, my question is, is, why is there no A behind and is taking it? Like, how do we switch from A and underscore to capital letters? So does that mean that it also takes other letters, not just A and underscore? They actually take, you know, whenever we write like this, let me show you one more time. Let me show you, I'll, uh, you know, share that with you. Let me show you one more time. That will be easier for you. Okay. 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 Fine. Students, don't get confused. Don't get confused. I'll show you just a second. I mean, this some students has the question. Why did it only accept A and not it accept Sal and not Sal? See, why, if I'll write like this, it has accepted, it has accepted sal is equal to 100, right? It is accepted. Now I'm writing sal is equal to 100. This is also accepted. Students, please don't get confused. Why? I have told you one more thing. I have told you one more thing. Just a second. Let me show you the slide. It accepts, it accepts the alphabets, digit, and the special symbol underscore only. But the first letter should always be the underscore or the alphabet. Now, I have shown you some examples also. After that, after that, when I was going ahead with this, when I was going ahead with this, I am showing you salary is equal to 100. This is acceptable. But if I write, it is not acceptable here because I have already mentioned underscore sal here. Underscore sal here. Now, sal hash 45 is equal to 100 prints 100. Why? See, I have telling you alphabet. Alphabet not a. See, alphabet is not a constraint. Alphabet is not a constraint. Okay, it can be in the uppercase. It can be in the lowercase. It should be an alphabet. Why? It has accepted sal because this is in lowercase. So it has accepted underscore sal. If I'll write like this, let me show you one more time. Sal is equal to 100, right? Now, if I write underscore star is equal to 200, right? Acceptable. Yes, sal and sal will give the different. Now, if I write, if I write sal, I'll get 100. And if I'll get right, underscore sal, I'll get the risk 200. But in case if I write only sal, I'll get the 100 only. I'll get the 100 only. Now, let's talk about, let's talk about Python is not a case sensitive. No, it is not a case sensitive. Okay, now there was a question, sal, Hash uh, ha uh, 45, we got 100, prints 100. Why? See, sal hash 45. Sal. It will not accept it. Sal hash 45. If I write like this, hash will not be acceptable. It is used for the commenting purpose only. If I write like this, I'll get 100 again. Is this clear to everyone, students? Is this clear to everyone? How can we practice all this after? How can we practice all this after downloading Python? Student, after downloading Python, you need to, when, when once you'll open it, 
you'll get the screen like this. You'll get the screen like this. Okay, you need to practice there. You need to practice there. Okay. Students, have you downloaded the Python? Have you downloaded the Python, Sunil? Please download it. Please download it. Name error. Name print is not defined. Downloaded but not installed. Install it. Install it, students. Install it. Then only you will be, you need to practice every day, whatever we are doing in the class, you need to practice it. Okay, students, let's go ahead. Let's go ahead. <clears throat> See. Sal hash employee is equal to 56. It's valid. Sal is 45 will be printed. Why? Why? Because the salary is already mentioned 45. Salary is already mentioned 45. So it will not accept hash employee. Hash employee. See, I have given the example, students. I have given the examples here. Yes. Anything after hash is comment. So hash is not used for is own oh, sorry hash is used for commenting in Python. Right now, if I write a hash sal is equal to forty five, a hash sal is equal to forty five, we'll get the invalid. Why? Because a is not defined earlier. Whatever examples I am giving you, just practice that only. That will be also helpful for you. Okay, whatever as you you'll get in the PDF, just practice that. That will be helpful for you. Now let's go ahead. Let's go ahead. No keywords to be used as variable. No keywords to be used as variable. Please remember this. Keywords are reserved words in programming language and they give the specific meaning to compilers. They give the specific meanings to compilers. So no keywords like if and else can be used. Let me show you. Let me show you. If I'll use else, is equal to 22, we'll get the error. But if I'll use hash, else is equal to 45, that is acceptable. So if I'll use if is equal to 22, we'll get the error again. If I write underscore if is equal to 22, that is acceptable. So else and if are the keywords. Else and if are the keywords which are which cannot be used. So they give because they give the specific meaning to the compiler. Clear? Clear? If I write int is equal to 67, it is valid because all names are not the keywords. All names are not the Keyword. Let's go ahead. All variable names are case sensitive. See, all variable names are case sensitive. See, I have given the examples also. I have given the examples also. 
Hope, whatever we have discussed is clear till here. Hope, is this case sensitive? Hope, whatever we have discussed is clear. Good, good students. Because if we use, if we use only if, it is not acceptable. It is not acceptable. This, if we talk about hash, if it has taken it as, it has taken it as a comment. Okay. Hash if is taken as comment. Yes, that is why I'm saying that. I'm saying that hash is used for commenting here. So if it's if we'll write if only that will not acceptable. But if we'll write hash if or any other symbol, if I'll write dollar, if I'll write dollar, let me show you. Don't get confused here. Don't get confused. Let me show you. Hash else is 45. It is acceptable. It is acceptable. Why? It is accepting it. If I write, it is, it is just taking it as a comment. It means it is just taking a variable that is 45. That is why it is acceptable. Now, if I write dollar as, is it acceptable? Is it acceptable? No. See? So it is just taking a variable that is 45. Clear, student? Is this clear to you? Yogeshwar, is this clear to you? You want to see that? You want to see that? I'll show you. You want to see that? I'll show you. Now you want me to write. See. See. Nothing happened. Let's go ahead. Let's go ahead. Now, now it is a case sensitive. It is, yes, it is treated as a comment. Now, let's go ahead. Let's go ahead. It is always recommended to take user-friendly variable names. Like if I'll write, Total salary of an employee is 45. Total salary of an employee. I'm not using the space because I'm not using the special symbol. Total sal of an employee is equal to 45. It is valid, but it is not recommended. So what can be used? Total underscore salary underscore employee is equal to 45. So this is acceptable also and recommended also clear now let's go ahead so next session will be of data science we'll start discussing about the data science so we'll discuss this topic tomorrow students we'll discuss the data science tomorrow hope whatever we have discussed till here it's clear to you any other doubt or any other question please let me know Student, do you have any other doubt or any other question? Attending classes online is chargeable. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. 
after the demo session, you need to pay, uh, even you need to pay the fee for the online classes too. Right? It is not free of cost. Any other questions, students? Okay, no questions are there. Okay, students. So, okay, a student has raised the hand. One student has raised the hand. Yes, Jeremy. Yeah, madam, uh, actually, uh, I think the online classes are free and recording sections are free. No, dear, no. You, you need to pay the fee for all the online classes, okay? The demo, the first three uh, classes, you'll get the recordings for the first three classes. But after yeah. that, you need to pay for that. Yeah, yeah. I'm saying that, but uh, uh, attending to classes is free of cost. Only for class. You attended the, the classes, which was free of cost. You know, it, they, they will only teach the basic concepts. Okay, okay. Okay. Because we are teaching the advanced to Python, we are it is chargeable. Okay. Uh, I, if we pay now, I will be receiving your classes and recording sections too. Yes, you will be getting each and everything. You will be getting the PDF also. Okay. And the cost is some three thousand from three thousand plus PSU. That is thirty five forty. Okay. Okay, madam. Okay. Thank you. Can we watch recorded session in the mobile app? Yes, you can. Yes, you can, dear. Yes, sir, tell me. Please unmute yourself. Yeah. So I see the I see like uh, Logic Labs uh, mobile app mm -hmm. available in Android. So I was just checking like if I miss any of these recording sessions, if I pay the fee, and sign in with the same email ID, I would be able to see the recording sessions, right? Yes, you will be. You'll be yeah. able to see the recording. Okay, thank you so much. Yeah. No problems. Sam, yes, Sam, Jeremy, please unmute yourself. Yeah, once paid the fees, the recording sessions can be downloaded? Yes, it can be all available right that uh, material ppt what you are showing that also can be shared yes you will get everything in not in the ppt format you'll get in the pdf format oh pdf format oh great uh then uh, the advanced level related stuff so you will help in that way right sorry i didn't get you advanced level like python maybe yes. api calling and all the stuff so maybe we'll fully focus on that way right in the later yes. part Definitely, we will. That is yeah, why that we... is very very important because yeah, with every program you are... can't work with the basic yeah. program, you can't work. You need to have the knowledge of advanced. Yeah, that is only we are expecting. That is only maybe in the later. <clears throat> it's not exactly fifty days, right? Maybe in the middle, like some of the sessions will be cancelled, so that may be extended, right? Maybe fifty yes. to sixty days, right? Yes, definitely. Some of the sessions, if in case of like any problem or anything, if I'm not available, then the session will be canceled. And after that, you will get the, uh, it will be extended. Don't you worry yeah, about maybe, it. Uh, it not exactly. Yeah. Okay, okay, great, excellent. Maybe you are always available to help in all the matter, right? Yes, I'm always available. And I have told you that <laughs> that is I'm, very, very important, yeah. I'll be providing you my email ID also. Okay. Yeah. In case of any query, you can always contact me in on my uh, official email ID so that I'll be able to answer you. Excellent. That's good. Yep. Thanks so much. Yep. No problem. Thank you. Okay. One, ma'am, I can't see the content of the session. The content page seems to have been deleted. Can you please send the content link again 
Okay, what I'll do is I'll tell my support team to send you the content, to update the content so that you'll be able to see the content. Okay, you'll get the content in the WhatsApp group. Don't you worry about it. Okay, Samya? So students, that's all for the session today. Any other student has question? Okay, no problem. Thank you students. Till then keep practicing and please download the Python and start practicing. That will be helpful for you. Till then take care and have a nice day. Bye.